Hello, this is Mario from Odeon. In this video, we will talk about the 3D view and 3D render in Odeon. The 3D view is the first window you see when loading a room into Odeon, and it shows a wireframe of your model. Let's go through the basics of the 3D view. You can rotate your model by holding left click. You can drag your model by holding right click. And you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Right now, the zoom increments are a bit large. You can toggle small steps by hitting the S key. There's a few alternative ways of zooming that are particularly useful when using a laptop. One way is to use Ctrl U and Ctrl I. Or, you can hold both the ALT key and left click, and then move the mouse up and down. The model will zoom into the mouse's initial position. An important menu in Odeon you should keep in mind is the Context Sensitive menu. This is always the menu between the Toolbar menu and Options menu. Here, you will find additional functions and shortcuts for the currently active window. Right now, this is a menu for the 3D view, but it will change as you go to other windows. Even different tabs within a single window have their own context-sensitive menu. So, we recommend to make a habit of checking it often. For example, back in the 3D view menu, you will find some of the functions we've previously mentioned. You will notice that the model is shown with perspective projection. You can turn perspective projection off with the P key. The advantage of this is that you get rulers at the edges of the window. You can change the units used in these rulers by going to Options at the top, Program Setup, Other Settings. You save the settings by closing the window. You can also measure the distance between two points. To do this, first position your model so that you can clearly see the points in between you wish to measure. Here, I will measure the width of the stage. Next, enable the modeling options with the M key. In this mode, you cannot rotate the model, but you get access to other actions. Then, hold the R key. Now, move the mouse to the first point and left-click on it. Finally, while still holding R, move the mouse to a second point. You will see the measured distance in the bottom right corner of the window. To go back to the normal 3D view, press the M key again. Models will have a series of default views saved in a list. You can go through this list by hitting the spacebar. This is an easy way of going to top or side views. You can also add your own views to this list. First, position your model with the desired angle and zoom. Then, hit either Insert or Home. Insert will add the view at the end of the list, while Home will add it at the beginning. Let's now find our new custom views. This is especially useful if you need to compare different results at the same region of your model. You can delete a view from the list with the Delete key. This will only work while actually looking at a default view. Functions and shortcuts related to default views will show in the context-sensitive menu. 
When selecting a model to open, you will see that a small preview shows up here. You can change this preview image by going to the 3D view, positioning your model, and hitting the W key. If you need to reopen the 3D view, you can do that by clicking this icon. If you have already defined sources and receivers, you can also go to the 3D source receiver view, which will show the sources and receivers in your model. You can export a picture of your model by using the Ctrl C and Ctrl V shortcuts. In this way, you can place a picture of your model in a document. By default, the image is exported in EMF vector format, which is supported by Office software. You can export figures and graphs across Odeon in the same way. We talk more about exporting figures in another video. You can look at a 3D render of the room by clicking this icon. The surfaces will show the color of the material assigned to them. If you have not assigned materials, the surfaces will be assigned random colors. Material colors are representative of their absorption curve, but this is explained in our video on setting absorption and scattering. In this view, you can look around by holding left click. and you can zoom with the scroll wheel. However, this zoom doesn't move you around the model. You can move forward and backward with the up and down arrows. You can hold the key to move continuously. And you can move up, down and to the sides by holding right click. The 3D render has its own set of default views. If you don't have any default view saved, pressing spacebar will take you to the center of the room. Once you have saved some default views, only the ones you saved will be in the list. If you go out of bounds, the 3D render will switch to an outer view, where the model rotates around its center rather than around your current position. To go back inside the room, you can manually move there. But a much easier way is to have a default view inside the model and go to it with the spacebar. Remember that this also works if you have not saved any default views. You can also save default views while in the outer view. To avoid accidentally going outside your model while moving, you can enable collision detection with the C key. In this way, you will not be able to go through walls. You can also make a cross-section of your room, which is more intuitive while in the outer view. You can move the cross-section plane into the model with the P key. Depending on the angle, you may need to hit P several times or hold it for a few moments before you start to see the cross-section. You can move the plane back with Shift P. The cross-section plane will always be relative to the camera, so you can rotate your model to get different cross-section angles. Again, you can export the image with the copy-paste shortcuts. With that, we conclude this tutorial, and we hope you have found it useful. Good luck, 